Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Drake Vulture. Now I know I'm a little bit late to this party, but I avoid the PTU all the time because I prefer to enjoy the game when it's in a more stable state. Now obviously 3.18 launched and that was not the case and I had all the bugs, all the 30Ks, in fact all of the Ks, all of the bugs, all of the things and stuff that go wrong, I had it all, as I'm sure many of us did. So I didn't really get to experience salvaging um, but now the game's running a lot better and I did get some time in this ship I can tell you that salvaging is quickly becoming one of my favorite game loops and there's some um, legitimate reasons behind that one I think the G Drake Vulture is a fantastic ship in my time with it I think the, t um, the payout from salvaging itself is excellent and it's a really almost twang tranquil relaxing experience that's not the same as mining you know it mining is going from rock to rock and then sorting out the mess after you crack the rock salvaging is just go around scanning find a corpse and start scraping and it's money it's relatively simple and with that i think the enjoyment comes because it is very very chill now obviously the Drake Vulture is an excellent ship. I think the detail is superb. I actually really like the standard colour scheme. It reminds me of those big yellow quarry dump trucks that you see. So it has that industrial Drake feel. There's no nonsense that we would expect. It's Drake's thing. They're very functional over anything else. Um, but as Drake ships go, I think this one's got just as much character as the Caterpillar. Maybe not as much, but it's not far off. I think this game loop is superb i think the payout is great i think the vulture is just the detail of this ship is incredible you can see all the rivets all the bolts um it's a very impressive ship i would also argue argue yes you don't need to buy this or any of the ships on the website but i think if you wanted to the price point on the website is actually quite fair i think it's maybe 10 or 15 dollars more than a prospector so it's similar sort of ballpark um, but at the moment as it stands you, it's very easy to make money with this ship and having the ability to try it without any bugs was very nice for me um, we can of course craft um, multi tools in the back which I believe is going to get removed that shouldn't be there but you should still be able to craft the um, tractor beam attachment so that's a nice little touch that we don't ha um, don't have on any other ships at the moment, a crafting station. So be interesting to see what direction CRG take this ship in, in regards to crafting. Now, I know I said that I've got an Apollo video I'm working on. That's still coming, but I wanted to get the Vulture one out. I know it's a little bit late to the party, but, um, you know, <laughs> Star Citizen things. So now that I've experienced it, I thought it was about time we talk about this ship and why it's almost certainly never going to leave my fleet. For the solo player that doesn't want to get involved with combat and constantly doing bounty hunting, or maybe you do not want to do cargo running all the time, this is a ship that you should certainly have your eye on in the future, especially when it goes in sale, on sale, sorry, in game, because the payout is very very good and it is incredibly relaxing this particular game loop um, just being out in the black scanning astro asteroid fields in and around crusader around yella the corpses are everywhere anywhere there's a battle anywhere there's a crash anywhere where a player has dropped something uh, dropped his ship in a hangar and exploded it is literally printing money um, and it's a great ship I've had an absolute blast with the Drake Vulture, so it holds its charm very well indeed. Okay, so let's discuss some of the features to be found on board the Drake Vulture. Scraper beams, dual integrated scraper beams use Drake's patented Tomium system developed with professional salvagers for the ultimate in speed and efficiency. Integrated tractor rig, the Ripper Claw is outfitted with an integrated Lariat tractor rig designed specifically for the Vulture. This industrial grade tractor's innovative propriety beam configuration makes it more powerful than setups three times its size. Cargo, as we mentioned, 12 SCU. 
The Vulture's deceptively spacious interior bay can be anything you need it to be, from extra cargo space to your personal sanctuary of solitude, and all points in between. Long Haul Capable The Vulture eases the pain of lengthy travel and the frequent dangers of associated therewith by providing a versatile combination of comfort and convenience. A full-size bunk implies a new composite mattress developed and tested by professional salvagers and haulers right here at Drake. When the going gets rough, you're never more than a skip and a stumble away from the cockpit and command station. Central Intuitive Control With maximum visibility and vital ship systems at your fingertips, the Vulture puts you in command of any situation and ensures you're ready for anything. You're in complete control of navigation, defence, weapons and the Vulture's unique all-in-one utility arrangement. So the Drake Vulture certainly has some features packed on board. Now let's take some quotes directly from the brochure, which I will also link below the like button. So, a lone wolf, strap in and set off. You're a wrecking crew of one. In a Vulture, everything is at your fingertips. We applied months of consumer feedback to bring you our most intuitive control system yet. Who needs a crew or a cumbersome rig when you can do it yourself in half the time? And come on, who doesn't dream about being their own boss? You're in complete control of navigation, defense, weapons, and a vulture's unique all-in-one utility arrangement. Now, I would have to agree with Drake Interplanetary on some respects of that statement. Not everybody wants to play with friends all the time. I know there's a lot of multi-crew attention being thrown towards us from CIG, but it is nice to occasionally have a ship that caters for a solo player and I for one would welcome more um, as much fun as we have playing with our friends at some point and sometimes you just want to chill and go do your own thing so I think it's a unique aspect that Drake have capitalized on here hence why I think that plays into the relaxation sort of thing is you can just go and do what you need to do in the vulture and not worry about anything and that appeals to me as much as I enjoy playing with my friends I don't want to play with everyone all the time and I think having your own personal ship and a little bit of solo space is a good thing so yeah good on you Drake I side with you on that statement the Vulture features a super compact onboard processor capable of separating and prepping raw salvaged materials the extra wide rear hatch makes quick loading and unloading a breeze. Get in, load out and move on to the next gig. 12 SCU of cargo space means you never have to worry about capacity. In the Vulture, you're truly the model of self-sufficiency. No more paying couriers, crew members, choppers or haulers. Put the weight on your shoulders and profit in your pocket. Push the limits wherever you roam. Following the spirit of the lone wolf can lead to treacherous ends, but it can just as readily lead to outrageous fortune. The Vulture is a ship for those willing to venture forth where others have failed. Be fearless with the comfort of a class leading safety rating, industry standard defense and weapon systems, and the rugged dependability Drake is famous for. Now I will of course, um, link the brochure in the description and we'll go over the specifications briefly now so it has a length of 33 meters a width of 16 a height of 9 meters its mass is 114,000 kilograms flight speed 165 meters per second it has one seat 12 scu its armor is medium which i do find surprising for a jake ship life support is size one weapons it has two size ones countermeasures 16 flares 16 chaff tools one size 2 tractor beam and one size 2 scraper beam so let's briefly touch on the mechanic itself um i kind of like the beams i know that star citizen has been coined as beam citizen lately with mining using beams and tractor beams and everything's a freaking beam I actually quite enjoy it and there's something very satisfying about stripping the hull of the ships that you stumbled across now as you can see here i called the vulture in from grim hex i traveled all of 10 meters and i found a broken caterpillar and a very broken hercules and i think i spent around 
maybe 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer before the ship itself was full of the material to go and sell. So that was a very quick buck I earned on this particular um, salvaging mission. But the act of stripping the ship itself from a visual perspective is very satisfying. Being able to take away the outer layer of ships and turn that into actual currency is excellent. So I know there are a lot of memes regarding salvage soon trademark, but now that it's here and we've got the first iteration, it's thoroughly enjoyable. When we get the munching aspect, that is also something I'm going to enjoy. And when we get the full implementation of the tractor beams, this game loop is almost certainly just going to get better and better. And I'm already a fan. I'm really enjoying the sort of peaceful relaxing vibe of going into the middle of nowhere and finding wrecks. I was very lucky with this one, um, but it's a very nice and enjoyable experience. Um, so, the Drake Vulture, who is it for? I would say it's for someone that doesn't want to play with people all the time. I would say it's someone that enjoys the mining aspect of the game, the cargo running, the peaceful, tranquil, sort of relaxation side of the game. People that aren't all into combat all that much and just want to go out and about then this ship is almost certainly for you um, like I said the brief time I've had with it I've absolutely been loving it I love the way the ship flies it's got a respectable QT drive it gets you far enough um, without having to stop all the refueling I can't remember what it is off the top of my head we will cover that as we progress through the video but the design of the ship itself now there was um, some controversy if you could call it that they took inspiration from an eve ship called the venture here's my answer to that i don't care because i don't play eve and i never will so it doesn't bother me whatsoever what star citizen have done here be it a copy or not it's irrelevant i don't play that other game i don't care um what they've created or even if it is their iteration of a copy um this ship detail wise is absolutely flawless um the only thing that broke the immersion for me, which has been fixed, was the cockpit animations. But it's not a bug that's um, strictly reserved for this ship. It has appeared in other ships that I've been in while I was trying to get some action in 318. So I don't think that is a ship-related bug. I think it's a general bug that covers a few other ships in my experience. Um, so, yeah. That's the only sort of game-breaking immersion thing that I experienced with the Vulture. It was mostly disconnects and a, a small issue regarding um, not being able to stack the cargo correctly in the back, um, which is more the sort of the tractor beam side. Other than that, everything else is... I mean, just look at the detail on the ship. You can see it yourself. It is superb. And we finally have a ship where the lights actually work. And you can see what you're doing. This is the route that all ships need to take from now on. They actually work and allow you to see. And that is game changing. Kind of. It needed to happen and it happened. Weapon systems, two size ones. You're not going to dogfight in this ship. You could upgrade them if you wanted to or swap them to another weapon system. Obviously, that's completely up to you. Um, I don't have any intention of upgrading weapons. If I get caught in a situation, it's game over anyway. So let's now then transgress and transport ourselves into the back of the ship. First impressions. Despite all the lights, I think it needs to be a little bit brighter. The ship is on and all of the lights are on. It's got that sort of timid, tinted yellow to it. I would have preferred a brighter colour maybe just white um, it's a little bit dim especially as you look towards the rear of the ramp you can see there that we have this small cargo grid just to the right where you can stack 12 boxes upon another um, once you're full you can go sell that you can fit more than 12 SCU in here with some careful planning uh, you'd need another cargo ship because if it's not on the cargo grid those extra SCU containers it will not register and you will not get the money for it so if you wanted to do that that is an option but you might need a friend with another ship we have the living quarters here very simple almost sort of elegant in its simplicity we have a, a toilet there as well also I kind of like the fact that there are components located in this particular area of the ship so if something was to go wrong 
you as the pilot have easy access to some of those important components as you can see here we have the coolers and two of the power plants arguably the most important some of the most important uh components on the, any ship and the gravity gravity generator there in the bottom left um which is quite small quite small very surprising how small the gravity generator is um but it is a fairly small ship i am intrigued by some of the gravity generators in star citizen like i still think the origin 890 jumps one is tiny along with the reclaimer so they're either extremely efficient which i'm hoping is the reasoning for it um or there's an error somewhere but we're going to go with extremely efficient because we're a thousand years in the future the cockpit itself it is a little bit cramped there's a door on the left um which when I first flew the ship, when it was launched, it was a long time ago now, I think. Um, but there was, it was treacherous getting in and out for a little bit. I haven't had that issue since. Um, so there is a door on the left, so you don't have to go in through the back. But just because I have the paranoia that something bad's going to happen, I always just go out through the back where I know 100% is going to work, unless I'm already parked. Um, but here we go with the lights. Now, this is how lights should look. These are the best lights on any ship in the game at the moment. In my humble opinion, they are superb. The Reclaimers ones aren't too bad, they're, but they're extremely blinding. These are just perfect. Um, so it's good to know that we have excellent lights on the Vulture. And you need it, because you need to see what you're doing in the dark darkness of space. Alright, so let's now then take a look at the basic weapons and components that we will find on the Drake Vulture. Okay, here we are, Urkel.Games, and we've got the Vulture selected, and as you can see, we have access to what this ship is currently equipped with. So, top left corner, we will start, as you can see, we have, as standard, two Bulldogs, size one, they're both located either side of the cabin of the ship. Not really going to use these to get into a dogfight situation. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not saying that you can't dogfight in this ship. There are options to upgrade the weapons um, should you choose to. Me personally, I'm not out looking for trouble. If I do find it or it finds me, my plan will be to run away as quickly as possible. I don't want to get into any sort of trouble. Um, the salvaging arms, we have a baler salvage head with a cinch scraper module and an abrade scraper module. Now I believe the difference between these two is one, the cinch is a bit more fining, a bit more refined as the abrade scraper module is very much just strip as much off as quickly as possible. Um, that's my sort of takeaway from the two heads. You can see they're all locked. I'm imagining that we're going to be able to upgrade these the same as we would with the prospect of mining heads. Um, mining heads are easily interchangeable. I think this would take the same direction. Missile racks, we have zero. The shields, we have two bulwarks and they are both size one. I would probably go for an FR-66 and then a palisade. They sort of complement each other. Um, or maybe just the two FR-66s. Shields are something that are important and I would invest the money in just to buy me a bit of extra time um, to try and make an escape if possible. However, we will see what the implementation is of the master modes because that might change our loadout quite a lot um, depending on the direction the CIG takes us in with that particular rework of ship balancing. Okay, power plants. We have two size one fortitudes. No need to change them. I've had no need to change them whatsoever. The Thermax as well. Size ones times two. Um, they work fine. Goliath is the QT drive. I don't have a problem with this at, at the moment. It has fairly respectable range and it's not that slow. Um, you might want to change it for just Stanton at the moment, but obviously. I always try to review the ships thinking about the future, you know, um, the Bolon for example is a QT drive that everyone hates but that will come good in, in the future and um, at the moment though you can do as you wish. Um, speed over distance is up to you. I tend to just leave the Goliath, I'm quite happy with it, you know, I'm not in a rush, who is when you're in a Vulture, what's the rush? Um, so yeah, fairly basic in terms of um, 
raw stock components. The interest will lie in the different salvaging heads that we can apply to the ship later on down the road and maybe the tractor beams and things of that nature we can swap in and out and the munching aspect of salvaging is yet to come in. Um, so it will be interesting along with the master modes just how um, we can customize this ship and in what way. Um, so yeah, fairly basic stuff um, from the Vulture but really I have no complaints with its stock loadout at all. I'm not out to be in a rush or get into combat so yeah there we go guys stock load out for the drake vulture okay let's move on then and to do that we will start with our walk around i like to do these for a sense of scale it's one thing for me to show you the ship it's another for me to walk around so you get a sense of scale and we are in area 18 on a roof looking good nice lighting nice ambient relaxing atmosphere that we are on right now so two engines as you can see four landing gear and this sort of cabin cockpit with a spoiler on the top or the equivalent possibly winglets to help with aerodynamics question um, mark but I like the look of this ship copy or not I just think CRG are just getting on the ball with their design even that little light that highlights the logo is a very pleasant thing to behold on the side of a ship then we have these long sort of grabbing arms if you could call them that um, with some sort of vacuum pumps or something like that I would imagine they are I don't know I don't work for Drake I didn't build the ship I didn't manufacture it I'm just going with educated guesses um, nice view so then we come around to the front of these arms and this is where the scraper modules are beam riding which I don't have a problem with um, I do kind of feel like they're a little bit small in some respects because the arms are massive and then we have the tractor beams just below the cockpit area there just below the cabin and then we have these in some respects it has a Banu defender kind of vibe to it you know with the long arms that ship has very long arms so yeah We'll see just how this all works when we get more implementations of salvage and munching because there's some features here missing from the ship at the moment but for scraping it's um, it's awesome. And we have the other one here nicely tucked away at the front they fold out on arms as you saw earlier so they get nicely stowed away but it is an interesting ship do like it we need some more salvaging variety we know we're getting another mining ship on the way from RSI which should have been Argo to be fair because there's way too many RSI and Drake ships at the moment let's get a bit of variety um, then we have an entry ladder point here and there's nothing fancy about this at all it's a standard ladder I kind of like the rustic feel that Drake stick to you know for a space age ship they add some touches that are still poignant to this day um, and I do like the engines and let's talk about the engines actually I can't help but feel as cool as they are and they are cool um, I can't help but feel if they were the same or similar flame um, look that the Drake Caterpillar, uh, Caterpillar has I think that particular aesthetic look of the flames would have suited this ship a bit better and made it suit that industrial look a little bit more if I was to tweak this ship I think that would be one of the things I would do I would give it the same flame outs um, that the Drake Caterpillar is so we've been around the ship landing gear it's a four landing gear system you see him stuttering there for some reason but we'll just gloss over that so we have a ramp it's easy to uh, get in and out there's two entry buttons either side of it we make our way in and it's a little bit deceptive it's more roomy than you think it's going to be so we have the cargo grid here located on the left and panel for the lights on both side again matching the outside then we have access to components as well here which is useful shield generators located in the back and we do have access to those so that works and functions and that's cool and we have a fuel tank that we can't get into just yet and this should be mirrored on the other side. Here we have the crafting station, and that is where the material gets protest, uh, protested, processed, and then distributed. And then you have to use a tractor beam to stack the cargo on those cargo grids. So it's a good system. And the salvage tool will pop out there, and we can create all manner of things and stuff. 
pyro multi-tool tractor beam attachment and some other attachments there as well but i think the multi-tool is getting removed which is a shame i think oh, you know they should leave it in mistake or not i like it just leave it i mean how much is a tractor beam uh multi-tool 500 alpha uc i think maybe it's not that much i guess maybe they're worried that someone's going to be really tragic and sad and just farm tractor beams which is who's going to do that who nobody right so then we make our way upstairs we have a single ladder i would have preferred a small lift if i'm honest so that when i'm going down to the cargo area i could have just jumped down and moved things around we have access to the quantum drive here life support just beneath it now i get that salvaging in the vulture is very easy and i guess they want you to work for it i.e not be able to quickly just go and belt feed your cargo and then you know you've got to work at some point to earn all of this easy money um, as i said the payout is fairly respectable um between 90 and 112,000 k i think i heard i recently got for those two ships we have the weapon rack there armor storage place and then that takes us through to the living quarters we have access to the battery that doesn't work yet resource management is on the way so i imagine that they've pre-built these to accommodate that factor then we have this area here and i have no idea what goes in there i have no idea what that is is that a kitchenette or what or maybe it's a place we could buy third party kitchen stuff i don't know if you do know please let me know in the comments below that was disgusting i apologize so yeah i have no idea what this is no idea i'm assuming it's a small kitchenette to be honest we have our bed with the log out function which is going to be extremely useful doesn't look particularly comfortable that duvet is almost certainly going to be an itchy and scratchy um but again so we have the coolers and power plants in here restroom so we open up this door Shoiler. Which should oh wrong button. Let's open that. Thank you. Um, that should fold down. That's the door access there, so you can get a little bit of privacy, which shouldn't be a problem really, because it should only be really you. Um, for efficiency, you could have two people on board, and you could almost certainly speed up the process of getting that cash. So nothing special, you know. It's just a standard space toilet shower combo. Then we have access to a computer here and scanner on the right hand side and below that the radar. Um, obviously there'll be no needs for blades because the pilot controls everything and I like that. This ship really has been catered for the solo player and I think the way the game's going and I hope I'm wrong, I hope they're not just catering to multi crew all the time because not everybody is interested in that you know you've got to have a little bit of flexibility so this is where this ship will sell um, and i think a lot of people are waiting to get this in game with in-game currency and i wouldn't blame them um, because the return from the profit you get will almost certainly make it worthwhile so the cockpit animation works with the seat as you can see here there is an annoying little bug and I, this is common on a few ships that i've been in um, it's very blurry and hard to read so we're just gonna have to gloss over that unfortunately now MFD layout everything is easy to read as you can see I have no drama or qualms with the MFDs at all I'm a fan of the Drake MFDs they're really nicely lit they're easy to read everything's within reach um, visibility wise you only need to see forward at what you're scraping really so obviously I wouldn't worry about it too much um, it's not too intrusive with the struts or anything like that in my humble opinion but it is a fantastic ship and I would recommend it um, maybe you don't want to buy it on the website but you should definitely consider picking one up when the ship goes on sale in game which I imagine will be a competitive price to that of the Prospector, which is I think is 1.2 million or around there, somewhere in that ballpark. So there we go, guys. That was my video on the Drake Vulture. The Apollo is on its way. The Apollo video is en route. I hope you did enjoy today's video. If you did, you know what buttons to press. And I've, I, of course, because words are hard, will have more Star Citizen content en route to your location soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Cheers.